TV viewers who were tuned into CNN on the evening of January 16, 1991, got to witness rare live coverage of a war about to begin. Correspondents Bernard Shaw and Peter Arnett were reporting on the state of Iraq's combat readiness live from their room at Baghdad's Al Rashid Hotel. After ignoring an ultimatum to withdraw troops after invading Kuwait, Baghdad took refuge under the world's largest concentration of anti-aircraft defense. It included 76 anti-aircraft missile launchers and nearly 3,000 anti-aircraft artillery installments. A thousand miles away, pilots of the U.S. Air Force's 37th Tactical Fighter Wing were also glued to the news. Two hours earlier, some of their squadron mates had left King Khalid Air Base to launch the first ever stealth aircraft attack. Did they make it? Building the most expensive bomber in the world. Lockheed built two prototypes under the codename Have Blue. They were quite small at just a quarter of the weight of an F-117 with a 72.5 degree swept wing and inwardly canted vertical stabilizers. But the cutting caused problems for pilots, so Lockheed California's Skunk Works project team leader, Ben R. Rich, a close associate of Lockheed's brilliant engineer, Kelly Johnson, and a veteran of the company's U-2 and SR-71 spy plane programs, secured government financing for two complete flying prototypes of better design. The prototypes were sent to a top-secret facility at Groom Lake at the Nellis Air Force Training Range north of Las Vegas, which is the size of Switzerland. This is where the U-2 and SR-71 were tested, and there was also a top-secret hangar filled with captured MiG fighter jets. Basically, Groom Lake was a natural choice for the Air Force's latest black top-secret program. The first F-117 prototype took flight in early 1978. It showed rapid deceleration in the nose-up position, a high landing speed, and a very fast rate of descent. These problems eventually destroyed the prototype. As test pilot Bill Park came in for a landing, the craft lurched upward, jamming the landing gear in a semi-retracted position. Unable even to land on the belly of the plane, Park burned off the excess fuel and ejected at over 10,000 feet above the Nevada desert. The prototype was destroyed. Park, who was injured during the ejection, never flew again. The second prototype, however, was a success, proving for all practical purposes its invisibility to radar. After that, construction on a full-sized model began. Legend has it that when Lockheed Martin's lead aerodynamicist, Dick Cantrell, was shown the desired shape of the future aircraft, he nearly had a stroke. After recovering from his initial shock, the designer realized that his department wouldn't be the main party responsible for the success of the new aircraft, so he gave his employees just one job, to make sure that the Wobblin' Goblin, as he called it, was at least able to get off the ground. Oddly enough, it did get off the ground. The F-117's existence wasn't officially recognized until November 10, 1988, when the Pentagon issued a press release describing the history of the aircraft and released a single, retouched photograph. The aircraft is 65 feet long, with a takeoff weight of 23 tons and a V-shaped tail. The wing has a large sweep of 67.5 degrees. The fuselage consists of smooth, flat panels with angles designed to scatter radar signals in various directions. This is known as a faceted fuselage and it reduces the aircraft's detectability by 90%. The cockpit canopy is made according to the same principle. It is covered with a special material containing gold. This coating eliminates the risk of irradiation of onboard instruments and the pilot's equipment. His helmet can emit a stronger background signal on a radar screen than the entire aircraft. The craft has no externally protruding elements. All weapons are located in internal compartments. Its flat endpoints are shielded by special heat-absorbing plates, which significantly reduce the aircraft's visibility in infrared light. All antennas and other transmitting devices on the surface can be retracted inside the hull of the aircraft. Composite radio-absorbing materials and coatings were used in the design of the F-117. The entire hull is covered with several types of the same materials, which were applied just like wallpaper. The aircraft has a black ferromagnetic paint coating, which not only absorbs radio waves, but also dissipates heat very well. The craft has a maximum altitude of 45,000 feet and a combat range of 620 miles. But that fighter was just a warm-up for our next monster. This is the most expensive bomber in the history of the world, the B-2 Spirit. Designed to carry out critical U.S. Air Force infiltration missions, the Spirit stays true to its name, slipping like a ghost deep into enemy territory before attacking, including with nuclear weapons. The B-2 is a flying wing, meaning it has neither a fuselage nor a tail. 
Its low profile provides greater freedom at high altitudes, increasing both the range and field of view of onboard sensors. The U.S. Air Force reports the aircraft's range as being approximately 7,000 miles. The B-2 needs to refuel every six hours at cruising altitude, taking up to 50 tons of fuel at a time. As of September 2014, there were about 80 pilots flying the B-2. Each aircraft has a crew of two, consisting of a pilot in the left seat and a mission commander on the right, with provisions for a third crew member if required. What's also striking about this aircraft, besides its unique features, is the degree of secrecy of its development and maintenance, which costs about as much as the entire budget of Pakistan. Any personnel employed to work with the B-2 must obtain a special clearance level and undergo extensive background checks by a special Air Force unit. A former Ford car assembly plant in Pico Rivera, California was purchased and extensively rebuilt to produce the aircraft, and factory workers were sworn to secrecy. So as not to arouse suspicion, parts were routinely procured through shell companies, soldiers would show up to work in civilian clothing, and employees were regularly subjected to lie detector tests. The secrecy was so widespread that access to virtually any information about the program was severely restricted until the mid-1980s, even for the Government Accountability Office and nearly every member of Congress. In 1984, Northrop employee Thomas Cavanaugh was arrested for trying to sell classified information to the Soviet Union. Kavanaugh was eventually sentenced to life in prison and released on parole in 2001. The B-2 was first publicly displayed on November 22, 1988 at Air Force Plant 42 in Palmdale, California, where it was assembled. The viewing was severely restricted and guests weren't allowed to see the back of the B-2. However, editors at Aviation Week discovered that there were no airspace restrictions over the exhibition site and, to the frustration of the USAF, took aerial photographs of the aircraft's shape and suppressed engine exhausts. The B-2's first public flight took place on July 17, 1989, in Palmdale. Whiteman Air Force Base, Missouri, is the only operating base for the B-2. Missouri's first Spirit was delivered on December 17, 1993. The bomber received a status of full combat readiness in December 2003. There are so many mysteries, legends, and outright misconceptions around the B-2 that there is really no way of knowing what this aircraft really is. Check it out in action! The first combat use of the B-2 took place in 1999 on the territory of what used to be Yugoslavia. The Spirit destroyed 33% of Serbian targets in the first eight weeks of U.S. involvement in the campaign. B-2s would fly non-stop from their base in Missouri to Kosovo and back. It was the first aircraft to deploy GPS-guided JDAM smart bombs in Kosovo. The use of JDAMs and precision-guided munitions effectively replaced the controversial practice of carpet bombing, which has been heavily criticized for obvious reasons. During the 2003 invasion of Iraq, B-2 Spirits operated from the Diego Garcia Naval Support Facility in the Indian Ocean, with some of the aircraft still flying ultra-long-range sorties from U.S. soil. Official stats reported that there were 49 sorties and 300 tons of ammunition dropped. In 2011, three of the aircraft participated in raids on Libya, attacking 45 ground targets. All in all, the B-2 has seen quite a bit of combat experience, especially considering that only 21 Spirits have ever been made. After the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, the original order for the production of 132 stealth bombers was reduced. The B-2 continues to successfully complete missions and has risen to prominence in the modern USAF fleet. So far, the B-2 has had no contenders that could replace it. It is still the top dog. Let's go back to where we started. How successful is stealth technology? On a January night in 1991, the goblins did attack their targets, all while observing complete radio silence. The whole mission was based solely on time. As soon as the first explosions were heard in Baghdad, all ground-based air defenses, especially the artillery, opened fire indiscriminately into the night sky in an attempt to hit their invisible enemies, which by that time were already on their way back. It was the F-117's most successful battle. We don't even need to mention the success that spirits have seen. The fact is, though, that stealth technology is rarely used and isn't primarily a military technology these days. It's more of a political manifesto a way of saying, tread lightly. There's nowhere you can hide. What do you think about these bombers? Write in the comments and don't forget to leave a like on this video because unlike stealth planes, we're actually supposed to see them. See you soon.